And it's not, by the way. If you think it is the most offensive thing you can say to a black person, you don't know any fucking black people. Right? Because have you ever seen what happens when you call a black guy a faggot? <laughs> they get real gay about it, you know what I mean? <laughs> Masterson, everybody. Yes. Oh, that's. Yes. Oh, it's a fun night. Thank you guys so much for being here. All right, let's get into it. People have brought this up a few times tonight. Have you noticed? And it's a topic of conversation everywhere you go. People are always talking about it. And I, I gotta be honest, I don't care what your opinion is about Leah Thomas or Riley Gaines or the NCAA or what's fair in sports. I'm glad that we finally have transgender participation in school shootings. <laughs> okay? I think it's long overdue, all right? I think if we're gonna let the men and women compete against each other in sport, we should do it where it saves the most lives. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like the delayed clap, sir, yes. Yeah, and I know that might shock you, right? Because as a straight white male, school shootings have mostly been our thing for the last 30 years. <laughs> My culture's not your prom dress, you fucking bitch. <laughs> But I like it. I like that the broads are getting in on it. And I knew it was a chick right away, too. You know why? Only six dead. Uh. <laughs> can't, but they can't do anything right, can they? That's the, you knew it was a biological woman because that's the indecisiveness of a woman, right? Uh. When men decide we're gonna do a mass shooting, we're pretty decisive about it, right? It's like jerking off. We point, we shoot, we hope one of our loads hits our stepsister. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, is that not the most Googled thing in fucking Pornhub? <laughs> I didn't make it that way, you guys did. I'm not jerking off to it, you are. I'm not gross. I'm gross, okay. How, how would I prove it? <laughs> He's like, prove it. Go ahead, I'll stay soft the entire time. Dude, I've been in a 12-year relationship. I'm the, I'm the master of staying soft. <laughs> Ass 
ask her. Uh, she'll tell you. Even when it's not supposed to be, dude. I'm like, it's your job to make it hard. I've done, the rent's paid. Now you do your part. Girls getting in on school shootings. You guys are too sensitive and empathetic. You're like, get ready to die. Oh no, is he some kind of black kid? Oh. I don't want to be a murderer and a racist, right? They're gonna think I'm just a shitty cop instead of a good martyr. Yeah, it's okay guys, calm down. If there's a school shooting, cops are generally Nowhere near it. They're hundreds of yards away, safely behind a barricade, waiting for the right time to go in. <laughs> oh, this is the, we're already off the rails and we're in the first fucking bit. I love it. But it was wild when that happened, right? Because trans people were like, oh no, now that one of us did a school shooting, we're going to be targeted for violence. Like, people are going to start retaliating and targeting us for violence. But here's my question for the trans community, right? What are we gonna do to you that's worse than what you wanna do to you? <laughs> you wanna cut your dick off just to feel like yourself, okay? You know they don't even do that in the Middle East. Like even Iranian people right now are like, bro, they hold dick? <laughs> They hold dick? I, they, even Demon Jew only takes a little bit of the dick, bro. You hold dick? I get it, you throw gay off building, right? But they hold dick? <laughs> Pete, other comics talked about it tonight. Have you seen these dicks, by the way? Oh my God. First of all, the audacity to call these things dicks. Like, I used to worry about the size of my dick, but fuck that, at least mine has a certificate of authenticity from the state of Pennsylvania, okay? I got papers for my dick, all right? Hey, listen, it might not look like much, but it has papers and it's pure, okay? It's not one of these fucking mutts you get off Craigslist. Graphic. You know what it looks like? I'll tell you what it looks like. You ever go to Chipotle? <laughs> right, and you get the new kid who doesn't really know how to wrap burritos. And you can tell while he's rolling it, like, that's not gonna hold. <laughs> but he fucking forces it anyway. And then it just splits down the side and you're like, dude, put that in a bowl. I can't eat that like that. Put that in a fucking bowl. <laughs> The audacity of doctors. What doctors finished one of those that was like, break out the champagne, boys? The first authentic human penis, right? High-fiving each other, spraying each other with the fucking champagne. <laughs> That's my litmus test for doctors now, by the way. And we live in Los Angeles, so they're very opinionated. You go in and you go, hey, before, before we get into your medical opinions at all, do you think this, I carry a chart, I carry a picture of one with me. It looks like a Chipotle menu. Uh, it also has salsa on it. Uh, I go, you think that's a dick? And they say dumb LA doctor shit. Like what really matters is if you think it's a dick and you gotta be like, yeah, you know what? I think I'll skip on the vaccine. I'm all set. I don't know if I wanna trust your opinion. You think that's a dick, Fauci? <laughs> You know who's gotta be pissed off about these dicks too? The dildo industry. Imagine being a, just imagine being like a craft Armenian dildo maker. You know what I mean? You got a shop in Glendale you've had for 60 years. <laughs> just like, bro, what the, what the fuck, bro? Hey, I make perfect dildo for 50 years and now these motherfuckers want to go farm to table with it. <laughs> Uh, I did that joke in Vegas and there was a guy in the audience and he was like, they don't even get hard. And I was like, wait, it sounded like he was complaining. I go, what? He's like, the trans dicks. They don't even get hard. You gotta pump them up like a Reebok. I was afraid.
everybody who's gonna come up to me after the show with like dildo pamphlets, like, listen, I work for the dildo lobby. We gotta, we gotta put a stop to this shit. Guy works for Big Dildo. <laughs> that's, the, that's the lobby you wanna work for too. Nobody wants to work for Small Dildo, right? This Big Dildo tried to push my family out of our business. Walmart sell weird, they tried to crush us. <laughs> And I make these jokes about trans people, right? And people think like, Josh, what are you, homophobic and transphobic? And no, I don't have a problem with how you choose to identify or what you think you are or any of that. I don't have a problem with it. I'll call you by what, if, listen, if you can trick me, I'll suck your dick. <laughs> I think that's a fair trade. I think that should be the deal, right? Like if you get to the dick before you know it's there, it's like a zonk in let's make a deal. You gotta suck it. <laughs> And Wayne Brady has to watch and talk about how fat you look in a leprechaun suit. <laughs> Is that magically delicious, you little faggot? We'll be right back. Wayne Brady. <laughs> oh, shit. I'll call you whatever you want, just as long as you can stay in that character while you're being tasered. <laughs> If you don't know what I'm talking about, you haven't seen this video. It was from last year's Pride Festival. Does anybody remember this? Yes. Yeah, one person who's seen me do the joke before. <laughs> Thank you, Vito. Actually, you would see this. You are the guy who would have seen this, yeah. It was like a trans at, at Pride, and the, and the police were there, and she's like, fuck you, pigs. We don't want pigs at Pride. We don't want the pork at Pride, right? She was very convincing, and then they hit her with the fucking prongs. And she was like, get off me, bro! Get the fuck off me! And I was like, nice try, sir. <laughs> Almost had me. Almost. I was about to suck that dick, and then you spoke up. Thank you, officers. Back to fucking blue, okay? Doing the Lord's work out here. <laughs> <laughs> this is how I know that being gay is innate and being trans is probably made up. Because when Lady Gaga's dog walker got shot, my favorite part of the pandemic, <laughs> he stayed gay the entire time. Like they literally stole dogs from him, shot him in the chest. I know what you're thinking, Mexicans. <laughs> and the whole time he's like, Witch of the West. <laughs> I go, yo, that shit's for real. That's not, he is not making that, that is not a choice, man. That is not a choice. I tip my hat, I was like, hats off to you, madame. What a, what a true, what a true ally to the fucking people. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, it's a real story. You didn't, he's like, no, 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 that's great. You didn't think that really happened? Yeah. Yeah. By the way, by the way, this is a real fun side fact of that story. The ransom for Lady Gaga's dogs was $500,000, and she paid it immediately. Do you know what the guy who got shot trying to keep them from getting stolen got? a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> so the next time you think of Lady Gaga as an ally to the LGBTQ community, why don't you snatch one of her fucking dogs away and see who she cares about more? We love all types of comedy. Um, I don't know. No, no. Literally all types. But no, I, I guess the more offensive, the better. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. They're coming for everybody. Black people, you're next. <laughs> Rachel Dolezal and Sean King are the tip of the iceberg, okay? Sean King is the foremost black advocate in civil rights today, and he is a white guy from fucking St. Louis. Get ready for trans racism, it's coming. And you're gonna have to do what we have to do 
you're going to have to go along with it and pretend and be polite, right? You're not going to allowed to you're not going to be allowed to object black people. We're going to get it's going to get so crazy. They're going to get to a point where the NBA is just fat guy, white guys like me slathered up with Nutella trying to dribble up and down the court. <laughs> And you're not going to be able to argue and be like, these aren't real black guys, right? You're going to have to sit back and go along like, hey, Jamal, do you think anything's wrong with this? He goes, no, these look like spectacular niggas to me. <laughs> look at him go. He runs a five-second 40-yard dash. <laughs> also, black people talk like old-timey English people then, too. It'll be a real, we'll all switch places. It'll be great. It'll be like a Freaky Friday, you know? You wake up black, you go to bed, you're a chick with a dick, and you're Korean. It's a real round robin. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I said the word. They were like, ooh, he's taking us in there, isn't he? Yeah, it's fine. And listen. My willingness to say that word may or may not have had something to do with me being canceled in 2018. It was, it was May 18th, 2018. It was right after the Santa Fe spring shooting happened, or right when it happened. And sometimes when you have these mass shootings, it's not a transgender person, it's just some crazy fucking Latino dude. And what happens sometimes is that a good guy with a gun will stop a bad guy with a gun. They don't like to tell you those stories because it fucks with the anti-gun narrative in this country. So what happened that day was because a good guy with a gun stopped a bad guy with a gun, the narrative on the internet changed. And everybody said, we don't have a gun problem in this country. We have a straight white male problem in this country. And I said, boy, you guys are really trying to make straight white male the new N-word. And the internet did not agree. <laughs> <laughs> you ever have the entire internet mad at you? <laughs> like Don Cheadle tweeted me and was like, nigga, shut up. <laughs> and I was like, all right, well, if he called me it, does that make me one and then I can use it? Because like Don Cheadle has a trans daughter, right? Right? So, and I don't know if you know this fun fact about Don Cheadle's trans daughter, her father is a failure. <laughs> I waited six years to say that joke on stage. Thank you. Yeah, it's funny. And it wasn't, people were mad because they thought I was comparing the existence of being a black person to the existence of being a white person. I wasn't doing that. I was merely talking about how great it goes in the history of our society when we try to blame our problems on an entire race of people. You know what I'm talking about? The Jews? <laughs> you guys can relate, right? Doesn't really go well throughout the entire history of humanity when you just try to chalk things up to a certain group of people. But I was kind of optimistic that like being a white dude would start to become more like being a black dude. <laughs> like, I look forward to the day when white women start fucking us to get back at their fathers, you know what I mean? <laughs> I, I want that talk. I want, a, I want a white girl to have to give me a talk before I meet her family, you know? <laughs> so, listen, they're very new school, and they believe that white people have no business with other white people, all right? So just be nice. Come to dinner. Try to enjoy it. Just try to be like one of the good ones, you know? <laughs> A real Guess Who's Coming to Dinner starring Tom Hanks, right? <laughs> he knows the only person we know that would move in uh, above a Chinese restaurant so that the Chinese restaurant would mask the veto smell. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's like, what the fuck is that? Ah, it's a That's Chinese terrible. restaurant downstairs. You know? It's, what are they killing dogs down there? I don't know. Yeah, down there. <laughs> and meanwhile, there's people down at the Chinese restaurant like, what the fuck is that? That's guy who's off the scale. He smelled Kung Fu. People go, you only joke about shit like that because of your white privilege, right? White privilege. Listen, sure, yeah, it's funny, but there are privileges to being white, but there are privileges to being every race. 
You know what I mean? Asians, you guys never get accused of cheating on tests. <laughs> Maybe a driving test. <laughs> Although I don't know how you cheat a driving test. What do you pull a showy Otani and go, I know driver. Tr translate the driver. Translate to all driver. <laughs> Every fun, thank you, yeah, show time. <laughs> Go Dodgers. Every athlete should have a translator, by the way. <laughs> oh, I see, you make a mistake. Mr. Kobe no rape a girl. <laughs> I would translate a rape a girl, okay? <laughs> OJ definitely should have had a translator. <laughs> Talk about Mr. Juice at all. No, he in a naked gun. He no do. Who you think good with sword? Him or me? You wouldn't even have seen the glove. He would be like, motherfucker, LJ's whole legacy is sad, right? Because man lived a long life, did a lot of things that none of us ever do. The worst part about the tarnish on his legacy is that his greatest life accomplishments will always be overshadowed by what he did on that football field. <laughs> Black people love that joke. Like, OJ was the first black guy in history where racism crossed off somebody being guilty of murder. That's where identity politics changed everything. They're like, we have a pretty insurmountable amount of evidence that this man killed his wife and some waiter, by the way. Ooh, bad for the service industry. <laughs> but it was like, they were like, all right, we're pretty close to convicting of a murder. And they're like, uh, this cop said the N-word. And they go, I think they cancel each other out now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I like the, oh my God. <laughs> Oh, wouldn't it be funny if like his prosecutors or whatever were here tonight? <laughs> Just like, yeah, with the OJ jokes? Oh, too soon. <laughs> but there's gotta be privileges to being every race other than just getting off with murder because somebody called you a slur sometime. <laughs> right, there's black privileges. I'll give you an example, right? Do you remember when the lottery was a billion dollars recently? Oh yeah. Yeah, Vito does, right? <laughs> What do you guys don't play it? You're already all rich. <laughs> this is Torrance. It's all beachfront property. What the fuck am I playing the lottery for? I won it. You can see my skin. <laughs> We're white. What do we need to win twice? <laughs> That's your <mentality. laughs> I play. Yeah, I play it when it's a billion. I don't play that two hundred million dollar shit like you. I'm not a fucking poor, right? <laughs> when it hits a billion, though, I play it. I feel stupid not playing it. And then, of course, you have to go to the one place where dreams come true, right? Where the golden tickets are, 7-Eleven. <laughs> yeah, not just for Pakistani immigrants anymore. All of our dreams are granted there. <laughs> just have to go in, right? To get your golden ticket. Come with me and you'll see a convenience store with homeless masturbation. <laughs> it's the guy in the corner just ha, da, 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 da. pick your numbers while you look into my eyes. <laughs> I'll pass this test, Gargoyle. Get the fuck out of here. But I went in to play my numbers, right? And I had this old, late, sweet old little white lady in front of me. She had to be like 176 years old. She looked like the old lady from the Titanic, you know. And she just turned around. I don't know if I have one of those faces, but she looked at me like we were about to be best friends. She's like, oh my God, you remind me of my grandson. He's a redhead too. I come down here, you play in your numbers? I come down here every Wednesday and I play all my numbers and it's all my grandkids' birthdays. And then I go across the street to the Talleyrand and I have fresh sliced turkey for dinner and then I get home in bed by 4.30 in the afternoon and I hope I don't ever wake up again. <laughs> And I was like, oh my God, lady, like, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm about to be a billionaire. Don't ruin my day with your awful life story. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I couldn't help but think in that moment, like, if I were black, 
she would have never turned around at all in the first place. You know what I mean? And that's a privilege. <laughs> Sometimes you just want to be left the fuck alone. You know what I mean? Sometimes you want to sit in the back of the bus away from the whites. Sometimes you want your own crisp, fresh water fountain all to yourself. <laughs> It's not all about privilege, it's about perspective. You just, you just lack perspective is all. <laughs> People go, Josh, the N-word's not funny. It's never funny. It can never be funny. You shouldn't agree so hard that it could be though. <laughs> but I'm with you. Uh, anything can be funny. People go, I got tro when I got canceled, I got trolled by the dictionary. That's insane, right? Yes, Webster, yeah, what do you, what's the other dictionary, go. I like how he said Webster, like it wasn't the only option. Ranch, bro? What is it, Hidden Valley? Name another ranch, go. By the way, doesn't Hidden Valley Ranch sound like a street name for a yeast infection? Just, just me? Yes. Yeah. See, I'm one of those people that would like not pay rent before I would starve. I'm like, I'm like I've always been like a fat poor. Because when we were really poor when I was a kid, like, that was, we did, we was like, you have Hot Pockets and peanut butter and jelly sandwich, that's all you have available to eat. So I was like, when I'm a grown up, I'm going to eat whatever I want all the time. And so the that's diet like never my changed. Number one priority. <laughs> yes, and it never changed. Right? Now it's just uncrustables. The dictionary said the N word is the most offensive word in the history of the English language. Straight white male is not. And I was like, oh, apparently this dictionary identifies as a thesaurus. <laughs> That's a really smart joke, and I understand that you're really too drunk to appreciate it. Thank you. And it's not, by the way. If you think it is the most offensive thing you can say to a black person, you don't know any fucking black people. Right? Because have you ever seen what happens when you call a black guy a faggot? <laughs> They get real gay about it, you know what I mean? <laughs> and it wouldn't happen at all at these days, right? If black people hadn't become such faggots. <laughs> what happened to modern black people, dude? Hold on a second. You're stealing purses from Nordstrom? <laughs> oh yeah, just like Easy e and Ice Cube used to rap about, right? Real gangster shit. <laughs> In my day, niggas snatch purses when they had money in them. Yeah. Faggots steal them when they're empty. <laughs> that's a great fucking day. That's so true. Oh, yo, you don't agree? Show me the millions of videos of white people running out of Nordstrom with purses. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever experienced having white privilege. I definitely know I've experienced having white guilt. Like, a lot of people don't know this about me, and a big part of how my sense of humor has been shaped my whole life is because when my parents divorced when I was seven, my mom left my dad for a black guy who was in the Air Force. He was younger than her, right? And he was the first real male role model in my life that was different from my father. And he broke every black stereotype, right? He hated rap music. He loved Hootie and the Blowfish. <laughs> he loved Pearl Jam, you know? He did super not black shit. Like he raised his sons. You know what I'm talking about? Like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that never happens. Get the fuck out of here. You got... <laughs> You're worried that we're filming this and somebody might see it. Don't worry. I'm in it. Nobody will see it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but he, he imparted a lot of like wisdom and perspective on me about the world. One of the things I love that he taught me was when I was a kid, right, he said, I hate the phrase African American. And I was like, why? And he goes, because I'm a fucking veteran that served this country 
and I'll be damned if you put any asterisk next to American when you talk about me. Yeah. yeah. You know. Real coon shit, you know? <laughs> Loving your country, patriotism. What a fucking Uncle Tom, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh. He's a great guy. He was very impactful in my life. Like, you know, we had was a short amount of time, right? Because there were other white bitches to fuck, obviously, than my mom. You gotta, it's like Pokemon, you gotta collect them all, you know? <laughs> but like, that means for a couple years after my parents divorced, I had both a black dad and a white dad. Like, if that's not white privilege, I don't know what is. <laughs> You know? Imagine that uncomfortable bring your dad to school day. I'm just hanging out with my little buddy Shahir. I'm like, hey man, is your dad coming? He's like, I don't even know my dad. I'm be like, ooh, this is uncomfortable. Uh, I know your dad. He is a great dad. Everybody, Shahir's dad. He's coming out for the both of us today, I guess. Uh, so glad you could finally meet him, buddy. You guys are gonna get along. Like, you have the same genetic code. <laughs> Both like the same sports teams. Like, what happened with him and your mom? Was she not white? Yeah, they, they don't like that. The African Americans. Sorry, the Americans. Americans don't like that. I don't know why we still have racism in this country, right? I don't understand why black people and white people can't come together over the things we both love, right? Like, like sports or music or shooting innocent black people. <laughs> You know what I love about that joke is that no matter where your politics lie, that joke is right. <laughs> like, if you think we have a gun problem in this country, that joke's right. If you think we have a problem with police brutality in this country, that joke is right. And if you think we have a problem with black on black crime in this country, then you should probably stop noticing coincidences, you fucking racist. <laughs> I think it's over though. I think racism is finally over in America. And I'll tell you, the minute I knew was when black people started complaining about their mental health. <laughs> like, hold on a second. You can't tell me that we live in two different Americas when you're calling into work sick with the same made up diseases as us. <laughs> I can't come in today, my anxiety. Oh, well, you probably should take the week. <laughs> Imagine talking to somebody whose parents lived through the civil rights movement and being like, ugh, I would love to go today, Dad, but my depression and anxiety. <laughs> it's like, why are you anxious, young man? Are there dogs chasing you? Are they not letting you go to college? It's like, no, there's just like a lot of people around and I'm tired. <laughs> it's like uh, <laughs> the other day, I had somebody ask for refunds for tickets for a show that's in two months. And their reason was, Funeral. I was like, what are you planning? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you, you have a funeral in eight weeks to get to? <laughs> are you going to kill somebody? And you're just like, well, I have to show up at the funeral, else I'll be a suspect. Uh, it's like, you're canceling tickets. It's not, I'm not your boss. I want to I reply and just go, I'm going to need a death certificate copy to refund these tickets. I'm going to need proof of death. <laughs> Spend too much time talking about mental health in this country. Everybody is in therapy. Stop it. <laughs> you guys are like, I go to therapy so I can work on myself. No, you don't. You pay somebody to fucking listen to you because you don't have any friends. <laughs> Here's a real white privilege in this country, and I'm gonna explain it to you. Here's the realest white privilege of all, is knowing that nobody gives a fuck about you. Like, I wake up as a white dude every day knowing that there's not a person in this country who gives a flying fuck about how I feel or what I think. That's why I do this, because I'm good at listening. <laughs> 
They don't give a shit. Nobody cares. And that sobering reality is what lifts you up out of whatever situation you're in in your life. It's knowing that at the end of the day, your happiness is up to you, your success is up to you, and where your life goes is up to you, and nobody's going to save you, and definitely not the fucking government. <laughs> You want proof of it? You want proof that being that that's what it is? Look at suicide. Yeah, pretty strictly a white thing if you really think about it. I'm a comedian, right? I know about 12 people in the last year that have committed suicide. And I have this message for you that if you are thinking about taking your own life no matter what you do, do not call me. <laughs> Because I am way too objective, right? If you call me and you go, dude, I don't know if I want to live or die anymore, I'm going to be like, listen, bro, give me the pros and cons of both and I'll tell you what I think. <laughs> like, I'm pretty fair. I'm pretty reasonable, right? People are like, that's not funny. Do you know they have suicide pods in Canada? Fucking great. <laughs> I'll help you load into the goddamn thing. Oh, this is nice. <laughs> I'll be standing outside of him like a used car salesman. Like, what is it going to take to get you into this today? <laughs> I, li I listen. I know I'm pro-life, but I'm I'm pro-suicide too. It's the ultimate freedom of choice. If you don't want to be here, get the fuck out, right? <laughs> but here's my question: When somebody kills themselves in a suicide pod, who empties it out? I, you know what I hope? I hope we launch them into space. Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> Just a bunch of dead people up in space. And then someday, like the next time Elon takes people up, he's like, the experiments aren't working. <laughs> you scare the shit out of them. <laughs> I like that morbid late laugh. I had, a, I had a friend of mine call me last year, right? She was suicidal, and I was mortified. Like, you don't know what you're gonna do when you get that call. I was terrified. I was horrified that she thought that we were that good of friends. <laughs> I haven't gone hard enough yet. Jesus Christ, what are you, a snuff film guy? <laughs> enough of this pussy eating. When is he gonna kill these women? This guy isn't going hard enough yet. <laughs> That's what I say. If I ever, that's where you go wrong, dude. They try to put you on like one of those game shows where you win a lot of money. And they go, what will you do if you win? And most people are like, I want to take my parents on vacation. They, they're immigrants and they work hard their whole lives. <laughs> <laughs> or then somebody's like, you know, I've had the same shitty car since I was in high school. I'd love to get a new car. You're like, I want to make one of those eight millimeter snuff films. <laughs> I want that amount of money. And they're just like, we, I don't think we can use this guy. <laughs> Oh, wait, it's a Japanese game show? We could definitely use this guy. <laughs> oh, dude. That's the thing. Suicide. We've all thought about it. I would do it in a fun way. You know what I mean? Here's what I don't understand is the purpose of the note. You know, nobody's listening to you while you're alive. Who's reading that? <laughs> Who are you leaving the note for? Nothing more narcissistic than leaving a note. <laughs> Somebody's going to want to know what I did to myself. <laughs> uh, have you ever seen anything from Josh before? Uh, yeah, you know, I, I went to a, a little hole in the wall show that he did out in uh, Harper City uh, maybe, maybe about a year ago. A couple other things, too. You know, I've seen him online and stuff, mostly. Okay, cool. Do you yeah. know what to expect from tonight? More or less, yeah. So what kind of comedy do you like? What's your favorite kind? Uh, I mean, honestly, guys like uh, like Dimitri Martin, so like guys who are, who are do wordplay stuff, I'm really into that. But just anybody that kind of keeps you guessing at what they're gonna do next, so that that sort of thing. Cool, I think cool. Josh is one of those kind of guys. We're all we're all trying to use identity to make ourselves feel more unique. That's all it is. Depression's a label. Anxiety is a label, black's a label, trans is a label, conservative, liberal, everybody thinks they have to be in one of these fucking groups to have a personality. And back in the day, you just had to annoy people with who you were as a person. <laughs> right? And now you guys are trying to skip that part where you have to actually talk to each other to hate each other. You know, the, the best way. <sighs> 
And companies are using it to market against you guys. They're, they're literally using it against you, right? If you're depressed, they market drugs to you, right? If you're black, I like that you guys are filling in your own punchlines, like <laughs> McDonald's, right? <laughs> I do love how not give a fuck McDonald's is about advertising to black people. <laughs> like, McDonald's commercials have gotten insanely black. You know what I mean? They're just like, McDonald's, by the towel, motherfucker. You know what I mean? Like, you know you want that shit. It's like, is that exhibit? What is happening? Like, they started making McDonald's commercials so black that I'm afraid I'm not allowed to eat it as a white person. <laughs> just walk in and I just go, is this okay or is this like a hate crime? <laughs> they don't have quarter pounders anymore. They're three-fifths a pound. <laughs> Fuck you, that's a great joke. I didn't compromise on three-fifths. Your ancestors did. <laughs> Companies are marketing to us that way now, right? Even when we don't want them to. Remember in the middle of the pandemic when Victoria's Secret was like, hey, have you ever thought about fucking a retarded chick? <laughs> Remember her? The first ever Victoria's Secret model with Down syndrome. Just like we had been asking for. <laughs> she wasn't bad. Who said it? Who said it? Who's with me? Is it you, Snuff Film? Fuck yeah, dog. Right here. Right here. She's not that bad. I gotta be honest. She'd be the third hottest chick I've ever fucked in my entire life. The tits are fantastic. Her tits are fucking phenomenal, dude. It's only when you start to look up at her face where you go like, something's going on up here. Turns into a fun game. Like, what kind of Asian is this? <laughs> but whatever you do, don't look down at her feet, dude. They are fucking jacked. Like, well, they look retarded, if I'm being honest. <laughs> It should be called Don't Look Down Syndrome. You know what I mean? Like, well, you should rename it. You should rename it. She's not gonna be in any Tarantino films anytime soon, I can tell you that. <laughs> but I got mad right away. I was like, hold on a minute. Are you telling me that we've been allowed to fuck retarded people this entire time? That I could have been fucking retarded women all these years? Because I've been putting up with regular ones and all their bullshit. <laughs> for three decades, you know? I didn't know if it was legal or not. So I was like, fuck it, I'm canceled, I'll take one for the team. So I Googled it, I was like, is it legal to fuck retarded chip? That's how I type it. And it, I was terrified by the answer, not because I fucked a lot of retarded chicks. Although, which man in here hasn't, right? Uh, what do you mean, oh, first of all, if you're offended, you already feel stupid enough that that joke could be about you. <laughs> and that's a choice that you made. Hey, wait a minute, I'm fucking dumb as shit. He's talking about me. I'm a woman who's dumb as shit. Fuck him. <laughs> what terrified me was that there's not a definitive answer. Like, here's what it is. If she's retarded and you're not retarded, and by the way, good luck proving I'm not retarded. I'm not a great actor, but I think I could pull that one off. <laughs> you guys can see me. <laughs> but they just, they test them, right? It's like, I am Sam. They put them on the stand. They talk to all their friends and their family. And they find out if you have the faculties enough to consent to sex or raise Dakota Fanning. <laughs> You know, by yourself. And I got scared to death, dude, because I've been with my girlfriend for 12 years, and if you tested her, I'm definitely going to prison. <laughs> like, I love her to death, dude, but if there's hard questions on that test, like, can you microwave tinfoil? Or show us on a diagram how you attach something to an email. <laughs> Or like, do you shit alone or do you need help sometimes when you take shits? <laughs> I'm going to prison. That's just what it is. I'm going to, and a lot of you are too. 
But here's the thing. I don't think we should stop saying the word retarded because it's mean. I think we should stop saying it because it's inaccurate. Right? Have you ever listened to a person with Down syndrome talk? Like my favorite thing now are these Down syndrome dating shows and autistic dating shows. Have you ever listened to them talk about what they look for in a partner? It'll break your fucking heart. They just be like, I just hope she's nice. And I hope she likes the same things as me. And also maybe hope she suck my dick a little bit. <laughs> They're still horny. They are still hard as fuck. You know what I mean? They're still like, hey, man, I'm not, not trying to get pussy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> He's out there. They still making it. They still making it. <laughs> you ever listen to so-called regular women talk about what they look for in a guy? You see these man on the street videos and it's like, I think he should make like a million dollars a year at least. He should be six foot five or six foot eight, but who knows the fucking difference, really? And his cock should be at least 32 inches. And I'm like, I think this one's the retarded one. You know what I mean? <laughs> Like, I know we say they have an extra chromosome, but the more I listen to us, the more I think we're missing one. You know what I mean? I love it. I love autistic data. Do you guys watch it? Do you watch Love on the Spectrum? So good. So good. I love it. You know what's funny, too, is we watch it together, and, like, one of the autistic girls will do something, and my girlfriend will go, I do that. Maybe I'm autistic. And I go, no, you're just a selfish cunt. <laughs> Women love to self-diagnose as autistic to avoid accountability for their shitty behavior. Maybe I'm not, I call them retarded and they go, hey, not me. And I go, hey, do you ever think about other people? And they go, no, but it's probably my autism. <laughs> the fuck out of here with that shit. My favorite one was when, was when Abby and David went to Africa. And she's just like on the bus looking out the window and just sees her first black guy and she goes, is this the safari? I go, no, it's Baltimore. We haven't left America yet. <laughs> We're still in East Baltimore. We have a layover. <laughs> and the guys, there's like two extremes, right? There's like Tanner who's like, do you like elephants? Do you like zebra? Do you like uh, air? Do you like breathing? Do you like music? Do you like existence? Do you like fruit? Do you like God? Do you like existentialism? Do you like, like, are you a genius? What the fuck is in there? And then you have like James who's like, I'm a really big fan of like, Metallica and I like, and I'm like, why do they always sound like they're either trying not to come or they just emptied the tank? You know what I mean? Like, those are your two speeds. That's all you get. I can't wait for Down Syndrome dating shows to take the next step into Down Syndrome porn. Yeah, that's right. I got a name for that show, too. Downs the Fuck. How about that? <laughs> and don't tell me it's gross, because you know what it would have that regular porn doesn't have? Actual fucking intimacy. Yeah. <laughs> and also, they might be scared by their own orgasms. That would be funny, too, right? <laughs> ah! They think their soul's leaving them like they're Indian. <laughs> Everybody's something. Nobody's honest. I'll tell you that, nobody's honest anymore. I'll be honest with you guys, Raj was up here earlier talking about slavery. I would have slaves. I would. I would, I'll be honest with you guys. I'm lazy as fuck, I would totally have slaves. And I just want to point out how nervous you guys got. I didn't say what color I picked. You just guessed, because you guys are fucking racist, okay? It's 2024, you could have picked anything. You could have picked Asian people, you could have picked robots and AI. <laughs> you could have had whatever you wanted. I wouldn't pick black people again, though, you know what I mean? Too many no-call, no-shows. <laughs> I got a fucking business to run, you know what I mean? <laughs> fucking shit's gotta get made on time. I'll tell you what I would pick. I would pick gay guys. Yeah. Because they'd be perfect for the job description if you really think about it. Think about it. How did slavery start? Giant, gay, naked crews. <laughs> Just a bunch of hot dudes chained up to each other, stroking their way to the new world. You know, you call it growing, I call it stroking. 
And then when you get here, here's the job. Your job is to be chained up to a bunch of other hot, sweaty, naked dudes and stand out in the sunshine all day and pick out fabric. <laughs> it's the gayest fucking job you've ever heard of, short of being Lady Gaga's dog walker. <laughs> <laughs> right, they'd be easy to manage too, gay slaves. Way, way better, right? Because if you, you can punish them the same way, if they get out of line, you punish them with things like whipping and sodomy and rape. But if they do a good job, you reward them with things like whipping and sodomy and rape. <laughs> Their favorites, you know? Man, I didn't, I, I didn't choose this life, it chose me. <laughs> Right? I can't help it. I watch too many slave movies. And I don't watch them like you, dude. I don't just turn them off after I come. I stay all the way in. You know? <laughs> I think about shit. You know, I'm fucking deep. I didn't know anything about Middle Eastern people when I started dating my girlfriend. I didn't. I didn't know anything. I, you know, 9-11, what else is on their resume? <laughs> it's a big holiday for us. We celebrate it, you know what I mean? Like, no, it's, you know, I paint my dick up like United 93. I crash it into her two towers. <laughs> Fucking never forget, okay? Maybe if it's going well, we'll do some, you know, Building 7 stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I like, how, I like how there's like one conspiracy guy in the audience who's like, his girlfriend's like, what's Building 7 stuff? And he's like, honey, I don't know, but I'll bet it's got something to do with the Jews. <laughs> but here's a fun fact. She's Middle Eastern and she's 36. She's never been to a funeral in her entire life. And it shocked me at first, but I, after a while I thought about it. I was like, no, it makes sense, because in their culture when someone dies, there's generally not much left to bury. <laughs> You don't really need so much like a casket and a ceremony, maybe it's a dustpan and a sense of adventure. Oh. <laughs> Mama, is Baba June looking down on us from above? Yes, because there are bits of him stuck in the vents. <laughs> Get the brush. <laughs> Everyone's always talking about traveling back in time, like, I love the time travel scenario that everybody comes up with. They're like, if I could travel back in time, I'd kill Hitler. And I gotta be honest with you guys, Hitler's not even in my top five. You know who's at the top of my list is a guy named Phil Kinzer. Do you know who Phil Kinzer is? Nah. Phil Kinzer's the guy who invented bumpers for bowling. Yeah. Phil Kin hold on, you say we need him? Well, that's because you guys are missing a chromosome. <laughs> Phil Kinzer, do you know this? You don't know the story of this because you didn't know who the fuck it was, but Phil Kinzer invented bumpers for bowling because his son was shit at bowling. And he couldn't get good at bowling, so rather than do what a fucking father does, he Don Cheadled it. <laughs> And he decided to just change the rules of the game so that his son could have fun. This was the first time in American history that the merit of learning how to become good at something didn't matter anymore. All we cared about was how people felt. That was the start of the downfall of Western civilization. If I told Hitler about Phil Kinzer, he'd be like, listen, we have to do something about this maniac. <laughs> I don't understand. Either you can bowl or you can't bowl. <laughs> Building Ali, it's called practice, okay? <laughs> you can't just not be good at something and quit <laughs> like art and then start a movement, you know? <laughs> the Bill and Ted rules of time travel, right? This is how I know that we never invent time travel because we've ever invented time travel, right? Then somebody at some point would go back and kill Hitler and we wouldn't even know about him right now if we're following the Bill and Ted rules. <laughs> but another possibility is that we do invent time travel and the reason nobody can go back and kill Hitler is because he himself was a time traveler who was sent back to stop something way worse like Phil Kinzer or the Jews. 